Hello Booktube, it's Ben here from the History Fertile. Um, here today, surprisingly, with a um, a book haul, a pen and sword book haul. Um, now if you watched my weekly reads video, I said I'd um, got some books coming. But I wasn't expecting them until um, Tuesday, possibly. But then there was a knock at the door this afternoon, and today's Saturday, and... Um, the delivery driver had a big box and obviously the books were in there so um it turned up a few days early so which is fine i, I don't mind how quick they come but um it means we get to do the book haul videos sooner than i thought now then i think i've got 15 books all together so i'm gonna split it into two book haul videos a part one and part two so um what I shall do is um, release, uh, post up one video tonight and then probably then the second one tomorrow night, maybe Monday, I'm not sure. Um, just before I get started, um, some of you might know that I mentioned about doing a second channel. Um, well, life's got in the way the past couple of days, so I haven't really got around to it yet. So, um, But I shall put a link. Um, in one of the next videos as soon as I've got some stuff up so you won't miss out I'll put a link up so that's no problem anyway let's get on with the books they these books are from pen and sword I'm going to do seven tonight and then eight tomorrow these books are all three I've got four from frontline books and three from pen and sword books um Frontline books are owned by Pen and Saw Books, so they both come from the same, more or less the same company. But anyway, the first book up is Hitler's Father Hidden Letters Why the Son Became a Dictator. And this is by Roman Sand Gruber. Roman Sand Gruber. Uh, priced at £25 and published by Frontline Books. Uh, there are three there are three contemporary reports on the beginnings of Hitler's anti-Semitism which are diametrically opposed to the statements. In Mein Kampf, Hitler himself transferred his anti-Semitic anti revival experience to the Viennese era, while he'd hardly been touched by it in his parents' home and in his school days in Linz. Hitler's childhood friend Kubizek, on the other hand, claimed that Hitler had already come to Vienna as a proven anti-Semite. Anti when I met Adolf Hitler, he was already decidedly anti-Semite. So it's basically, um, it's a book, they've obviously found some original letters or hidden letters and documents that um, relate to maybe Hitler's father and his family and might show some sort of clue or reasoning as to why Hitler turned out the way he did. And I've heard numerous stories about Hitler and why he turned out so bad and was anti-Jewish and all that. So um, it'd be nice to have a read of that and just try and see if there's any truth to the rumours. Um, you might find the the book hauls I've got uh, today, they're, they're quite, um, there's quite a few Nazi and Hitler type books to the, in the pile, but um, which is a bit unfortunate, but you can't help. That. You often think to yourself, well, surely they, they've written as many books about Hitler as they possibly can, but no, it seems like they can't. This is the right, the next book is The Rise of Abwehr Hitler's Nest of Vipers, written by Nigel West. I might have got that wrong. The rise of the oh, the rise of the Abwehr. I'll see if I can get a right pronunciation for 
next time. A young seaman, Duncan Scott Ford, was recruited on the waterfront while his ship, the SS Finland, was docked in Lisbon. Short of money, Scott Ford was introduced to the Abbe recruiter. Kuno Veltsin, who successfully cultivated them. Scott Ford then sailed to Liverpool and reported back to Van Ryzen on his next voyage in June. His ship then sailed to Salford where he was arrested by MI5. Under interrogation, Scott Ford confessed and he died on the scaffold at Wandsworth in November 1942. Hmm. Now I've just recently read about um read a book from Nigel West because um he's a a prolific prolific writer on um espionage and spies, so I'm presuming this is roughly the same sort of thing. That's priced at £25 and published by Frontline Books. There will be a link below this video um, to the various publishers, so if you fancy buying yourself a copy, you certainly can. And if you have any comments about any of the books, or if you just want to say something or anything like that please feel free to do so then more than you're more than welcome and i read all the comments and i'll reply to most of them the next book nazi ufos the legends the, the legends and myths of hitler's flying saucers in world war ii by sd tucker That's published by Frontline Books and priced at twenty pound. In nineteen forty nine, US Marines Major turned military aviation journalist Donald E. Keogh was asked to utilise his old contacts and look into the source of mystery of the popular newsstand men's magazine True, which evidently specialised in printing stories that weren't. The resulting piece, appearing in January 1950, was one of the most widely read articles in American print history, being hastily turned into the first full-length book on the subject, The Flying Saucers Are Real, which sold over half a million copies and introduced the general public to the idea UFOs were alien craft being covered up by the government. Keogh reported a phone call from the pseudonyms former intel officer John Steele, who fed him info that the flying saucers were British inventions excuse me, based on captured Nazi prototypes back engineered from spring 1947 onwards. Hmm. Now I'm a bit, um, I'm one of these people that any idea I'll kind of give a, a listen to or, you know, a second thought to something but um, I don't always believe things and whilst I believe there is something out there part of me thinks that it's just you know Nazi UFOs just sounds rather bizarre and extreme but um, it's not a big book but I'll certainly give it a go right the next book off World War Two, for a change. This is called British Transport Police. A definitive history of the early years and subsequent development. Written by Malcolm Clegg. This is the most up to date of only a small handful of books ever to have been written about the complete history of the British Transport Police. The book is a must read for all serving and retired British Transport Police and staff, as well as members of the numerous Home Office Police Forces and employees in the railway industry. As a result of several years research carried out by the author, this book contains some exciting, new and previously unpublished material. The book itself should appeal to a wide range of people, including students and historians, particularly those interested in railway history, police history, 
and social history, including crime and punishment. A number of rare and interesting photographs illustrate the book, some of which date back to the 19th century. And that's priced at £25 and published by Pen and Sword Books. Now I should find this quite interesting because um, my youngest son has said he fancies joining the police force maybe sort of in the next year or two. So um, yeah, I'll have a good read of that. And also when I was at university, my um, main lecturer who I really got on with um, he, he used to write a number of books about um, the police force and that sort of thing and the social issues and, that revolve around the police, so it should be quite good. The next one is another different subject, luckily, and that's Queen Elizabeth I, Life and Legacy of the Virgin Queen. Written by Paul Kendall, priced at £25 and published by Frontline Books. And saying this, the author's name reminds me, um, I think I know this author. I'm pretty sure he wrote a book I read a couple of years ago on Henry VIII, so... Um, Praise for Other Works by Paul Kendall. Oh. <laughs> oh, it says here, Praise for Other Works by Paul Kendall. And then in quotes, it's got a highly recommended book. And that's a um, tag to someone called UK Historian which is what I used to be called when I first started. Oh, well, it's a pleasant, pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so, <laughs> some more quotes. Extraordinarily informative and inherently fascinating from Midwest Book Review. Really well written and illustrated, Tudor blogger and superb but from Books Monthly. Oh. Well, there's a surprise. It was the Paul Kendall, Paul Kendall I was thinking about. Um, oh, I was a bit, a bit shocked. I wasn't expecting that. Better read something from the inlay. The 44-year reign of Elizabeth I, daughter of Henry VIII and the last Tudor monarch, was considered the golden age. It saw the emergence of the great playwrights such as William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe, while the exploits of Sir Francis Drake and other sea dogs helped establish England's position among the great maritime powers. This book looks at Elizabeth's life through some of the many artefacts, buildings, documents and institutions that survive to this day. From the execution of his mother, Anne Boleyn, when she, when she was just two and a half years old, to her imprisonment on suspicion of supporting Protestant, Protestants, Protestant rebels. Elizabeth's early life was a turbulent one, but her accession to the throne ushered in a period of stability. Oh well, I'm definitely going to give that a read. I'm still quite surprised at um, being quoted. Right, if you hear a noise in the background, you'll probably hear a crashing about soon. The um, cat's managed to find its way in. Old Marmite. The next book is Back to a World War II, Save the Last Bullet. Memoir of a Boy Soldier in Hitler's Army, written by Wilhelm Langbein, or by Langbein, published by Penansor Books and priced at £20. Save the Last Bullet. Will Langbein, 
He was just 13 when the Nazis took him away from his parents. Uh, one of the names is just around me. Willy Langbein was just 13 when Nazis took him away from his parents under the pretext of protecting them. Their real reason was to turn him into cannon, cannon fodder for use against Hitler's enemies. Deployed to the collapsing elite Eastern Front in the last days of the war, Willie, now aged 14, and his schoolmates were ordered to stave off the relentless Russian advance. They were not expected to return alive. Mm. That sounds good. So that saves the last bullet. Memoir of a Boy Soldier in Hitler's Army, written by Wilhelm Langbein. Uh, published by Pen and Sword Books and priced at £20. The cat is currently making his way under the table and probably making his way through to the next room. Hopefully. Right, the last book for tonight is Armoured Warfare in the British Army from 39 to 45. Um, I've read a couple of these fine fix and strike books before and they're usually quite good, very detailed uh, and very infor like, informative. It's written by Dick Taylor. Published by Pen and Sword Books and priced at £25. And these are good books and they're pretty decent, uh, pretty weighty books as well. So um, it's very compre comprehensively written. Um, and as I read one pre uh, not long ago about tanks, this should be good. Let me just get the cover back in. Fully illustrated complete history of British armoured warfare during the Second World War. Graphic accounts of the principal armoured operations during the conflict. Follows the evolution of the tank during a period of rapid technical and tactical changes. Describes how the poor performance of British tanks early in the war was converted to success on the battlefield in 44 and 45. Packed with vivid eyewitness testimony from soldiers who served in tanks and other armoured vehicles during the war. Demonstrates the lasting importance of the British Army's strong regimental system throughout the story. The second of three volumes relating to the history of British armoured forces. That was quite good. That's Armoured Warfare in the British Army, written by Dick Taylor, £25 and published by Pencil Books. So there we go. Um, that is the, the first book haul video, or part one. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've got any comments, please feel free to drop, it down, uh, drop them down underneath this video. And don't forget, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please feel free to do so. And the part two video will be out tomorrow sometime, hopefully, or maybe Monday. But thank you very much for watching. Take care. Uh, look after your families and I shall see you soon. Thank you very much and goodbye.